musty hobbit, and there's nothing that a hobbit loves more than another helping of second breakfast. Welcome to the show. Uh, today we are going through the pickups of everything that I got at the Midwest Gaming Classic. This video is probably a week overdue at this point, but I've had a few things going on, uh, one of which being uh, that I have taken a greater role in Twitch streaming lately, so if you are interested in seeing me on a more regular basis, I am streaming Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday nights, uh, and you can find links all over the place. We'll make sure that you know where to go. But uh, this was my fourth uh, year at the Midwest Gaming Classic. It is my quote local show being that I don't have to fly to get there and uh, it's one that I really look forward to every year. As as is most years I got the opportunity to see and meet a number of people, some that I've only interacted with online, some that I have met at this show previously and so uh, it's always nice to kind of work out a few deals and things like that. So I had a few things coming my way or deals that I had worked out with somebody before the show even started. So let's dive into a couple of those things and we'll get into some of the stuff that I got off the vendor floor as well. And before we hit all of that, I do want to point out I'm wearing the nice VIP lanyard and our uh, we got our VIP passes this year. Uh, I spoke uh, on a panel about doing YouTube uh, for the second straight year um, and they were nice enough to give us uh, some a little bit of some recognition beyond just wristbands so that was really cool of them uh, i will be posting the video on that as well the first couple of things actually came down from canada via nintendo hodge chris uh, who uh, was attending the show with his family for the first time but he brought down some things from some other people who uh, were kind of helping and hooking me up with uh, with some things that i had been hoping to get for a long time one of them uh, being this and this is the adapter that allows uh, the Xbox One X or S utilize the Kinect that came with the original model. They had phased out the port on that um, so these normally are very hard to find. Uh, they were releasing them for free for a stretch and then when they discontinued them they all of a sudden shot up in price. It became very very difficult to find one so uh, Derek hooked me up with that. Derek is also the uh, part of the Two Dorks YouTube channel as well as the Dollar Dorks podcast. He found this when he was thrifting. Uh, this is Crimson, a Crimson Skies, almost like a Hero Clicks style game. Uh, I've never seen this uh, specifically, and so um, pretty cool Aces pack. So I assume that you'd get yeah, you get a couple of planes uh, and a couple of, of pilots as well. Um, I need to research a little bit more into what was going on with this, but he sent this down with Chris as well. The other thing that came from uh, Canada and again uh, via Nintendo Hodge was uh, an upgrade for me in my streaming capability and that is specifically uh, this HD60 uh, Elgato game capture card and this came from uh, James Retropixel uh, on YouTube as well and uh, he had a spare one laying around and I was in the need for an upgrade and so he sent it. James, you, you're um, generosity is unparalleled, so thank you very, very much for sending that. And I'm already using it, uh, and it has been working pretty well. Next up, I ran into Vigigamer from uh, the Weekend Rental podcast, and uh, he again is from from the Midwest area, uh, and he had up some nice uh, video game dust sleeves made for their podcast, uh, and uh, they are really high quality from uh, video game dust sleeves. You should check out them on YouTube and Weekend Rental. Um, this is pretty cool because I hadn't yet seen these in person. I've only seen some videos on it, but it's cool to see them done. He's got Weekend Rental on this side there. I did get to meet Captain Algebra for the first time, although we've talked to each other for well over a year. We actually missed a chance to talk to each other last year. Uh, but we had had a deal that we had done a couple weeks back, and uh, there was one more thing coming my way, and that was the manual to Friday the 13th on the NES. In another trade of some items that I was trying to purge, I actually acquired... Uh, a copy of Super Mario Strikers on the GameCube. And everyone tells me how fantastic this is for a soccer game, let alone a Mario-themed soccer game. So uh, this came from Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming. And last of the things that I acquired from other people at the show, before we even got to the vendors, this uh, is something that uh, my co-host for Cartridge Club Prime podcast, Ryan, uh, had found uh, and he'd been hanging on to for a little while. This is a t-shirt. 
and apologies for the wrinkling. This is a t-shirt from Final Fantasy XV. Uh, he said he got this for 99 cents at a Goodwill. Uh, this is the logo for the Hammerhead Auto Shop, which is the auto shop that you end up going to at the beginning of Final Fantasy XV. So uh, it's, it's a t-shirt. It is my size. Who knows? So let's get into the vendor floor. We uh, They have done a little flipping of things. So actually the vendor floor was in a different location, although, again, we were same venue. And uh, I, overall, I'm pretty pleased by the vendor floor itself. I tried to take some footage using my GoPro attached to my chest, and it actually worked out pretty well. Um, but we found a number of things while I was uh, hunting. And so um, one of these is a, this is sealed. Um, this is the Blu-ray of Season 1 of Stranger Things, and uh, they have done it up to make it look like an old VHS tape, which I think is just really cool. There always tends to be something at a show like this that I didn't think that I wanted, but when the availability and the possibility of picking it up is there, I'm not going to pass on that. Um, so I actually grabbed this from Retrobit. Now, I've already taken this out uh, of the box that it came in, um, but Retrobit is in pre-release for these new controllers, and these are N64 controllers modeled after the Hori gamepad, which right now goes for like $100 US, and um, they're very, very hard to find. These uh, they had for pre-sale, they got them for $30 a piece, so I got a red one. Uh, they also had a translucent blue and a translucent green, but the those fantastic colors just are not my thing. I went with this one instead. Uh, I figured smaller hands. My son is getting more and more comfortable with playing video games, so maybe he can try some N64 stuff, and this would probably be a better way for him to do that other than uh, playing either with my Retro Fighters controller or the Trident itself. Next up actually came from the guys at uh, Video Games Monthly, who uh, I had subscribed to their service a few times in the past, and, and they wanted to kind of... Uh, talk to me a little bit because I had discontinued my my membership. So it was great to get to meet those guys. Uh, they actually said, "Here, you know what? Why don't uh, why don't you take something out of this box?" And there were he had they had a, a little bin they brought out, and it had a bunch of complete in box NES games. Uh, and so I picked out uh, this complete in box copy of Bump and Jump. Uh, for the NES and I had this one my one of the first lots of games that I ever had had a copy of bump and jump I actually let that go or traded it off or something so now I have now I have a complete courtesy of video games monthly so one of the next things I grabbed was a an upcoming cartridge club game of the month and one that I actually used to have uh, and that was uh, that is this for the DS this is uh, Chrono Trigger. Um, this is the, I, I think, the definitive edition, as people will say. Uh, it is probably the most ideal uh, and also more affordable than the Super Nintendo one. Uh, I really wanted to get the one on the Famicom, but the prices for Super Famicom carts at the convention were a little intense, and I just felt like it wasn't going to be ideal to spend. They wanted, I think, 55 for a loose copy of Chrono Trigger, which is maybe a $5 game loose on Super Famicom. So, Passed on that. I did find this, however. Uh, got him to come down a little bit because it's uh, little labels got a little bit of water damage. And I was okay with buying it loose because when I traded in my copy to GameStop, I hung on to the manual and cart or uh, manual and case. So now things are reunited and it feels so good. Now, obviously, if I am going to play uh, Chrono Trigger on the DS. And I need to have a means to play that. I didn't have uh, a DS. I actually had traded off my 2DS XL as well as my DSi. So I was kind of in a weird spot needing that. So I actually uh, was talking to somebody and actually picked up a nice uh, polar white um, DS light. And so uh, working condition, he came down on price as well because I was nice and talked to him for a bit. And... Uh, so that was great, uh, and funny enough, and this is one of the things I actually caught on footage here, is when I was at their table earlier in the day, uh, I came across a copy of Thor on the DS, which is April's uh, Cartridge Club Portable Game of the Month. So, uh, having upon that, it was a little bit more justification to pick this up, but I'm glad to have done it, and the fact that it's got, again, the DS Lite has the GBA port is certainly a perk. Uh, I let my son play some of Thor, and he is hooked. And so I'm afraid how much or how little I'm going to see of that console going forward. We'll have to see about that. 
Uh, the next little bit are going to be things that actually fulfilled my wants list. If you recall it, or if you have seen my video before of the five things that I was interested in locating or interested in finding at the Midwest Gaming Classic, this was one of the uh, one of those, and that is Devil's Third for the Wii U. I did not see very many copies, but I found this one. Uh, it was reasonably priced, and uh, again, I felt like knocking off some heavier hitters, and that's kind of the way that the rest of the show went. Like, I did not get a ton of games. Uh, I ended up really focusing on some heavies and again with the goals that I had sort of set there were there were a few main targets one of them was going to be all the LJN games and I ended up abandoning that one for this show there will be another time when I can go finish those out uh, but I figured I let's let's get some things that I have a hard time finding uh, I can always pick up the five and ten dollar games uh, either through good lots on eBay or something like that so it's a convention. Let's do something special. Uh, this was actually the last purchase that I made, though, for the NES, and this is uh, Gremlins 2 by Sunsoft. Uh, great little game, and everyone that I've told that I picked that up has been super, super excited. Um, it's a lot of fun. I've tried it out, and it is, it is kind of tricky. But um, the next goal that I had set was to get one of the remaining four like heavy hitter Capcom titles, and so. I really had had uh, one of them in mind, um, and I'm not going to mention it because that was in the previous video. But uh, I'd made a couple. Uh, I made a really good trade here to get the price down on this one. So really out of pocket. I think I spent forty dollars, uh, and I got a copy of Ducktales Two. Woo! Again, that accomplished one of the targets that I had for the show of getting uh, getting a Capcom heavy hitter, but wait because uh, I had a bunch of other things that I was selling off to some other people uh, and I actually used the funds for those from those sales to entirely buy this game so out of pocket I spent nothing to acquire Snow Brothers and this was the one that I really really wanted to get uh, this plays a lot like Bubble Bobble I actually played all three of these on stream a couple weeks ago happy to knock two of the big four uh, Capcom heavy hitters off the list so really remaining now is Chippendale 2 and Mighty Final Fight I saw plenty of copies of Mighty Final Fight at the show uh, but again they were teetering around that $200 mark and uh, they were from vendors who I don't think were going to be movers as much as the guys that I got and found them from so I was pretty happy about that uh, now like I said there were some other goals that I had set and those goals did not get achieved uh, at this show and that's totally fine um, but I found something else and I could not pass up the opportunity to pick it up uh, and it was from a vendor that uh, and I'll leave their name here somewhere um, who had planned to have the Super Famicom Final Fantasy games for me um, in box but somebody had picked them up before I got to their table uh, which is fine no, no big deal but I appreciate them working on price for this and this uh, this was an item I did not expect to find, let alone um, see and want so, uh, so, so much. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time, and a game that I am actively playing right now, uh, as this is the 20th anniversary of this game's release. Um, but this is a figure, a 1 6 scale figure of Renoa from Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, this is a the 1999 release from Kotu Bukaya. Uh, and I have some friends who are in the uh, statues and collectibles sort of markets, and they said that this is one that's absolutely worth grabbing. So I'm very, very happy to find her. She's in wonderful shape. It even has the card, which commemorates one of my favorite moments in the game. Um, but I couldn't not. I, I had to find a way to work this out with them. And so uh, they came down on price a bit. Uh, I kind of leveraged the fact that the Super Nintendo games weren't there. But um, he got a lot closer to what it would have cost me to, to uh, purchase it elsewhere. That's going to do it. That's everything that I got here. It was great to get to see all of you. For some of you who I only had the opportunity to see in passing or wave at 
Uh, I hope to get the chance to meet you again, so I hope that you come back to the Midwest Gaming Classic real soon. And I will wrap things up by saying that I will be at Too Many Games in June, uh, which is really not that far away. I think we're like six or seven weeks away from that show, and so uh, I'll be doing, again, the same kind of thing, a wants list and all that um, going into that, and I hope to see people there. If you're planning on going to Too Many Games, please let me know in the comments, and I hope to find time to see you during that show. Again, just a quick reminder to like the video if you did, and if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that. I will be around real soon with another video as well as other content. Check out the Twitch channel as well. That's been going really well, and I made affiliate in a couple of weeks, which was awesome. So uh, I'm really excited about where what direction that's going, uh, so you can definitely take a look at that. But for now, I'm going to say thank you for coming by. I've been Musty. Take care of yourself, and be good to each other.